Hey everybody, check it out. What's up? It's Heracles Porsche's professional intro. Yay! Hey, what's up everybody? It's Heracles Porsche here, also known as Guild Lock on Xbox Live. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. If not, hugs for you and pinchy pants for your enemies. Pinchy pants! On today's very long but very special video, we are going to be taking a complete tour of everything that was added to and changed in the Outer Rim update and DLC. Those are two distinct things from one another, by the way. You've got the... Uh, DLC, which you have to pay for, which um, give you access to some very special content, and uh, but there's a little bit of content that everybody gets access to, and a lot of patch notes, updates that everyone should be aware of. So I will try to let you know which thing falls into which category as I go through everything that's been added here. So I'll give you a quick rundown on what's been added, and then I'll dive right into the patch notes, because, uh, you know, those are kind of important too. I will explain why soon, but uh, the changes. So we've got one new game mode, Extraction, which you're seeing right now in the footage. Yeah, and uh, I believe that's going to be DLC purchasers only that get to play Extraction. So we've got two new heroes. And that's a change, an update for everybody. Everybody gets to play with those new heroes, regardless of whether you paid for the DLC. Uh, three new star cards with the that are pretty easily unlocked with the new HUT contracts. Again, that's for everybody. And there are four new blasters uh, that are also in the HUT contracts. So those those are a little more, bit more difficult to unlock. So here's a rundown of the new maps and how I'm going to be exposing you to them today. Um, first up, what you're watching right now is Palace Garage, and that's on the new Extraction game mode. Next up after that, we'll have um, the Soru Sub Pipelines, and I'm going to be playing some Heroes vs. Villains on that map, and you'll get a lot of exposure to one of the no new heroes known as Nyanyub. And after that we'll have the Soru Sub Refinery, which we'll be playing on Blast. And uh, I'll be using a new star card called Scattergun quite a bit. And finally after that we'll bring it back, we'll be on Jabba's Palace. Again, it's, I know that some of those maps all have similar names. But uh, Jabba's Palace will be the last map, and then we'll come back to Extraction, and you'll see my first kill with the new Disruptor Rifle power-up. Okay, again, that list of maps we're visiting today is Palace Garage, Soar Sub Pipelines, Soar Sub Refinery, and Jabba's Palace. So the other hero, or villain rather, that you can use is of course Greedo and he's on the Imperial side and uh, of course there are, like I said there are a bunch of new star cards and blasters which you can look at pretty easily by going into hut contracts but really what we need to do people pretty soon is start checking out those patch notes and maybe if you're uh, I don't I feel sorry for if you're asking this but you might be asking Oh, why do I need to look at patch notes? Because if you haven't looked at patch notes, you're a little bit of a noob. You're a little bit of a scrubby scrub if you don't look at patch notes. Because um, patch notes tell you about new game mechanics, and new game mechanics tell you about new tactics. And new tactics make you a better player, so let's look at the patch notes. So you can all become better players as a result. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, Star Wars Battlefront, Outer Rim, update, additional content functionality. 
Outer Rim, now available for Season Pass owners. That are these, that's these maps that you're looking at right now. Um, new feature, Hut Contracts add a new way of obtaining weapons and star cards. Like I said, I already covered that. You can... What you guys should do... Uh, one of the first things you should do when you load up Battlefront is go to look at the Hut Contracts. And that's under your Collect screen. Like I said, you you can spend money to open a hut contract, and then you do some specific little uh, series of tasks, like get a cert use a certain star cards, or get a certain amount of points on a game mode, or you know get a certain number of kills with a certain number of weapons, you know with certain weapons, all kinds of stuff like that, and. What that will result in, and that will unlock, yeah, yeah, it's basic. You spend some credits, you jump through some hoops, you unlock some of these new star cards and blasters. And in, so, yeah, if you guys are like me and you played a crap ton of Star Wars Battlefront and you're just swimming in credits, you might as well go unlock all those hut contracts right now. And you, you might be, I don't know, you might be dead set on getting the blasters right away. Or you might, or the new star cards right away, or you might be willing to wait, but there's no, re if you are swimming in tons of credits, like I said, there's no reason not to go unlock those contracts right away so you can start making progress on all those various things. And if you're a little shorter on credits, you might need to ration and, you know, if you're earlier on in the, if you're getting you know, your unlocks and stuff, then you might want to hold off on doing the HUD contracts, but uh, definitely go take a look at those. It should be your first priority, whether you paid for the DLC or not. Alright, moving on from HUD contracts. New feature, Spectator Mode, introduces a way to watch private match games with a variety of camera angles and the ability to swap between players quickly. So yeah, if you guys don't play a lot of private matches, this change probably won't affect you too much. Um, however, if you're if you do set up a private match, especially if you're doing something for YouTube or you want to see everything that's going on in the game, this could be fun. So anyway, let's move on from that. Multiplayer menu. Redesign the screen to facilitate players being able to get into a game mode more quickly and easily. Um, okay, just gotta stop right here. I have to say, out of all of the changes that are happening in Outer Rim, this is my least favorite. My least, least favorite. Um, because I think this has simultaneously dumbed down the game and made it uglier. I mean, I don't know which players were complaining about having to choose between 9 or 10 different beautiful pictures of game modes every time they play this game, but making us ch choose between 40 player, 12 player, and uh, and hero game modes didn't improve my Star Wars Battlefront experience at all. It's just, and I think they one of the game modes they actually changed, they reduced the number of players in it to simplify things even for, for people. So that was, a, that was a stupid and ugly game change. I really was not in favor of that. Just had to say that, um, because yeah, uh, I try to give a balanced review of everything, and I'm not a fan of that change. But um, th there are a lot of changes I really like in this update and DLC, but that was just not one of them. Anyway, I've said my piece about that. Time to move on. Multiplayer. Teams will now rebalance when transitioning between maps. Well, this is a surprising new change. Um, could be good for us because there wasn't, there's never really been a proper system for player balance, so this could be great for the game. And uh, as you can see, we're getting towards the end of extraction here. That beautiful ship landing there to signify that the uh, objective is about is about to be captured, and the game is looking like the rebels are about to win. And this game mode definitely does favor the rebels. 
not rebels. The rebels. It favors the rebels, but also the rebels. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to comment really quickly on the footage there. Alright, let's get back to these patch notes. Um, we have a new feature in which an objective can be highlighted by each player to highlight where players are headed. Press X on Xbox One, Square on PlayStation 4, or E on PC. Okay, I'll take that. Uh, ranks. Increased rank cap from 50 to 60. Uh, I'm not actually sure what this has done for us. Um, except for letting us get a weak way alien when we hit level 60. Uh, you can pretty much ignore the new level caps. It's pretty... Anyway, I did not get a kill there, as you can see with that new power-up. But that did lead into my... another kill. And then someone else did get a kill there with that same power-up. I don't know. I gotta stop nattering on about the footage. Because we have a lot of patch notes to get through. Um... Let's see here. Uh, scoreboard. Added icons for playing as a hero, playing in a vehicle, and player ping. More scoreboard changes. Uh, rearrange score to be the first in the column. So I guess before maybe it would have been kills or something? I don't know. Um, scoreboard. Fared Faded player row to signify when a player has been defeated. Okay, so I guess you can let, let you see how many players you have fielded at a time. Can be handy. Uh, combat. Added combat role to non-hero characters. Strafe and double tap B on Xbox One. Circle on PlayStation 4. Or for PC, strafe and press alt. Can be rebound. Um, so yeah, I actually... You, won't see me do a single combat role. It just doesn't seem to actually be that useful, but I don't know. Maybe we'll find some way to have a fun with that later. Uh, partner. The partner icon will now be visible on screen at all times. UX. The currently selected trait card is now shown in the deploy screen. It can be more handy than you think. Reminding yourself which trait you have is be very handy. And there we go, there's the end of my first extraction game mode. Obviously I'm showing you guys those really good scores first, you know, uh, that out of all my videos and there I am, my little, my little piece on the uh, end score screen. And in just a second, they're going to show, he's going to see some of the progress I made on hut contracts. That's going to be popping up in just a second. And uh, after this, we're going to be go transitioning to heroes versus villains. On pipelines, and you'll get to see a whole bunch of Nyanya. But anyway, there's the progress I've made on the hut contracts. Those are the star cards only. I don't know why it focused on showing you the star cards rather than the blasters. But there we go. Okay, here's the heroes versus villains footage now and like I said you're gonna see a bunch of Nyan now anyway let's get back to reading off these patch notes for you guys um last additional last function change they updated the game credits list okay anyway let's move on to weapon and star card changes new weapons the DL18 and DLT 19X can be obtained via HUD, HUD contracts. Actually, there's two blasters besides that. I guess their patch notes didn't cover everything. Weird. Okay. New power-up. The T7 Ion Disruptor has been added to the power-up pool. And you saw a little bit of that at the end of the last game. Um, you'll show. I'll show it to you again at the very last game in this gameplay footage. Uh, all right, more weapon and star card changes. General, triggering, triggering a card right before death will no longer result in an effect not triggering and the card going on cooldown. So that was basically a bug fix. All right, bodyguard corrected the level three description. Uh, survivalist corrected the level three description and bounty hunter corrected the level three description. Alright, so they did change, and an actual change for Bounty Hunter. Uh, they modified 
the drop chance and cooldowns. So, uh, so for you guys who don't know what Bounty Hunter is, Bounty Hunter is basically a trait star card when you're not using your hero. Anytime you kill someone, you have a chance to get a power up. So they've changed the percent chances you have to get a power up while using the Bounty Hunter trait. So while you're using Bounty Hunter, um, level 1 you have a 25% drop chance, level 2 you have a 50% drop chance, and level 3 you have a 50, you have the same 50% drop chance, but you get a 75% cooldown reduction on all of your star cards. Alright, shields, personal shield, and squad shield, and the blaster cannon will now to deflect and absorb most forms of projectiles except the cycler rifle the proximity bomb and of course the new brand new scatter gun uh, another change to shields personal shields just personal shields when the personal shield is active the player is unable to fire weapons and throw grenades but can still deploy droids turrets and call in heroes and vehicles. So yeah, that's actually a pretty big change if you guys use personal shield a lot. Um, one of my favorite things to do with personal shield was to flip it on and throw like a big thermal detonator. And uh, I won't be able to use that tactic anymore. So this is this is why you read the patch notes, people. Uh, little things like that can really make a big difference to the kind of things you can get done on the battlefield. Uh, Bowcaster, updated damage to be consistent across all three charge levels. Projectile damage is now 40, explosion damage is now 33, and the explosion radius is now 2 meters. Uh, Bowcaster, lower the max hold time from 5 seconds to 3 seconds. So that might make using the Bowcaster require a little more skill since you can't hold it for those full 5 seconds anymore. Um, Bowcaster now properly goes on cooldown when firing a shot and then quickly entering a turret. Okay, so it's basically another bug fix. Barrage. Lowered fuse timer from 2-2.25 to 1-2.25. So basically they lowered, they lowered the time that before one of those grenades pops by a bit under a second so uh, those grenades will pop a lot sooner after you fire off a barrage and actually um, another okay uh, let's see another change to barrage uh, they decrease the inner explosion radius from three to two meters so that's like a side grade to barrage a buff and a nerf at the same time I think overall it would be good for a barrage because I think that having, you know, having like two, two to two and a quarter, um, you know, seconds to get away from a grenade is uh, quite a bit of time to dodge away. So, uh, yeah, cutting that in half in spite of the reduced explosion radius. I think cutting that in half will help the uh, help the barrage overall. But yeah, one of the first things I want to do is test barrage once I'm done here. Um, impact grenade. Increased damage from 90 to 100. So that's a big deal because I'm sure you go, guys can guess 90 damage would mean that a pretty good amount of the time you might you might not score a kill when you throw that impact grenade 100, 100 means that you'll probably score a kill with impact grenade against anyone who's not using the um, bodyguard trait um, impact grenades decreased explosion radius from 2.25 to 2 meters so again they've made a side grade for the impact grenade. So I think they're doing the same thing. They're trying to make it more useful without letting it turn into a broken overpowered star card. 
and I look forward to testing out Impact Grenade and see how that works. Uh, Ion Grenade no longer deals collision damage. Flashbang Grenade added a screenshot component to give it an extra disorienting effect. Now I can definitely attest to I have been using that flash grenade a lot and had it used against me a whole lot during my tests of the outer rim content and of course a lot of that has to do with the fact that you need to use a bunch of flashbangs if you want to unlock that new dioxys grenade but that screenshot effect oh and there I am getting Boba Fett because I'd never used Nyanyub's blaster before that um, but as I'm saying um that change to flashbang will definitely make it a much more effective star card so be sure to try it out uh, people can s looks like people can still use their radars fairly effectively I haven't tested that thoroughly but uh, yeah try using uh, the new flashbang because it, it, it has definitely become more effective and try using the scout trait with it if you're gonna be testing it out because uh, I think it has definitely become an actually somewhat effective star card now so definitely try out those flashbangs especially after you unlock the uh, after you've you know opened up all your HUD contracts you get the credit for that scan pulse cooldown time increased from 10 to 18 seconds and 8 to 16 seconds so this is a nerf of course um, but uh, I s it, it won't break scan I mean that's a huge nerf to scan pulse scan pulses are still even after all being a nerfed patch after patch after patch I think scan pulses as you can see see here they're still going to be a fairly effective star card so I'm not worried about the scan pulse becoming useless but yeah they have got gotten quite a bit weaker to have that uh, to have that cooldown increase so much and obviously you can see that in the footage right here since I'm scan pulsing every chance I can get get to right here um, the DL44 damage decreased from 19 to 13 at ranges greater than 40 meters so that's a little bit of a nerf obviously at one point in Battlefront history everyone complained that the DL44 was overpowered I think those days um, are behind us I would say more or less uh, power-ups deployed turret droids and turrets will now self-destruct after 20 seconds when the owner is defeated this might seem like a small change but um, I think those power-ups, the droids and the turrets, can have a pretty big effect on the game. So, yeah, it's definitely, for people who are aware of this change, it's definitely going to affect how you're going to play. And it's kind of bizarre because you could be defeated and come back well within 20 seconds, and then I guess your turret or droid would just end up popping regardless of the fact you're back on the field but yeah I think people who d deploy droids and turrets and are thinking tactically might start taking a lot more care to make sure that they're not defeated after those things go down because um, I'm sure you guys know that droids or turrets can rack up a decent amount of kills and those extra scans off that Viper droid can be very useful. So definitely be aware of that change. Blaster Cannon. Kills now count towards leveling trade cards. That's basically a bug fix. Blaster Cannon no longer takes splash damage from its own shots. Basically another bug fix. E-Web, which is the non-star card Blaster Cannon. Uh, players now correctly take damage when right up against the barrel of the gun. Okay, Viper Probe and R5 D4 Droid. Spawn protection decreased from 
two to zero point five seconds. I actually don't know what that change means. So if you guys, I don't know, is that protection for for the droid or is that protection for people that droid could hit? I don't I don't know what that means. So if anyone can tell me what spawn protection decreased from two to zero point five seconds means, uh, that would be great because I would love to have that information. Uh, R5 dash D4. That's the one of the little droid, rarer droid power-ups. Uh, now shows the correct health bar color for both teams. Another bug fix. Smart rocket. No longer fires from the center of the player camera. Now from the barrel of the weapon. Basically, seems like another bug fix. Uh, vehicle turret. Destroying this will now properly grant you score. Jump pack. Cooldown lowered from 25 to 22 seconds on normal. Or from 20 to 17 seconds upgraded. So, I mean, I'm pretty happy with this change. I have no, certainly def have no problems with players who use jetpack being able to get around the map more quickly and easily. It's... Yeah, I approve of this change. Yeah. All right, we're getting through this. We're making pretty good time here. I still have a bunch more patch notes to read. I hope you've been enjoying this footage of me using Nine Nub. He's definitely a lot easier to use than Greedo. You can see he's pretty he's pretty straightforward. He's got his turret. He's got his pulse cannon, and he's got a. Uh, a proximity explosive. They're all pretty easy to figure out. He's much easier to use than Greedo. I don't have a lot of gameplay footage with Greedo yet. Uh, he's a little... I haven't quite figured him, hit him out. He's got uh, some kind of weird leveling up system. But yeah, here's the end of the hero hunt... or sorry, hero versus villains footage. And next up we're going to be looking at the source sub refinery on blast and i'll be showing off that new scatter gun star card quite a bit there although you've already seen a good chunk of that so far but still never hurts never hurts to show you even more scatter gun all right guys while you're watching this footage let me take you through some of the vehicle changes that have been made the t47 airspeeder now properly explodes when hitting the ground after a player ejects the T-47 airspeeder. During walker assault, it is no longer possible to switch tow cable targets during the tow cable event. I didn't even know that was possible, but okay. Speeder bike. Kills with the cannon and are now properly displayed. Speeder bike uh, no longer takes damage when just outside the range of the orbital strike boundary. Nice little bug fix, I guess. ATST No longer takes damage from fire. Well, good. Those things need all the help they can get. ATST changed the max pitch on the grenade launcher. They're really not specific on whether that's a buff or a nerf, so I'll have to look at that at some point. Millennium Falcon and Slave 1 now are immediately destroyed when crashing into the ground while in first person view. Um, the DF-9 laser fire is now visible when angling the turret up. Y-Wing. Players are now properly notified if they are killed by a Y-Wing. I, I didn't even know people could be killed by Y-Wings. Anyway, there's more vehicle changes coming, guys. They're just really game mode specific, so stay tuned for that. We're about to look at the multiplayer game mode changes. Let's take a look here. Uh, general. Uh, miscellaneous spawning improvements across various map and mode combinations. General. Princess Leia's Honor Guard and Emperor Palpatine's Shock Troopers are limited to only two spawns during the Heroes vs. Villains and Extraction game modes. So, it might not seem like it, guys, but that's a pretty huge change to Hero vs. Villains and uh, would definitely have a pretty big impact on how I would personally use those resources strategically when I was in Heroes vs. Villains. Like, originally I would just use those guys as kind of disposable rocket 
abusers, and now you really, when you're playing as those uh, elite troopers, it looks like you really want to hang on to them because they don't give you extras in Heroes vs. Villains or Extraction. So you really want to use those effectively and maybe not as sacrificially, as, like I said, as you know, as you would have before. So definitely be aware of that change when you're playing Heroes vs. Villains. Um, general, players no longer instantly die during vehicle deployment after having taken damage that would kill them prior to the transition. Fighter Squadron. Games will no longer end in a draw when a player that crashes into the ground would have awarded the winning points. I guess that's a bug fix. Fighter Squadron. Vehicles of equal size will now both be destroyed when colliding regardless if one vehicle is shielded. Okay, so here's what that change means. What that's going to mean is um, for anyone who played a decent amount of Fire Squadron, what we had going on was a very cheap tactic where whoever was playing in the Millennium Falcon could flip on their shields, crash into Slave 1, and basically deprive the enemy team of having a hero unit out just from using that tactic and I had a lot of fun doing that underheaded tactic but I'm kind of grateful it's gone because uh, it meant that the already kind of outclassed Imperials in Fighter Squadron uh, aren't gonna just lose their uh, very important slave one in the sky to some kind of stupid stuff so that's that makes me happy um I don't know why they didn't implement that change to... And I guess you could still, if you were the Millennium Falcon, you could still flip on shields to protect yourself from crashing into TIE Fighters. I don't know why they didn't implement that same change to uh, other modes that have fighter out, fighters out, like Walker Assault. I don't, I don't understand why that wasn't an every game mode change, but... Um, there we go. I think that was, I think the main purpose of that change was just to stop the uh, the falcon the falcon punch as it's come to be known. Um, all right, here's another change I'm excited for. Hero hunt, redesign the way in which the new hero is selected. Now the top three damage dealers have a chance to be the next hero. Spin the wheel. So yeah, guys, I think. It was a little over a week ago, I did a vi video talking about how they were most likely going to change Hero Hunt. It looks like the change is in. They've made it pretty simple, yet definitely quite a substantial change to the Hero Hunt mechanic. And I've had a lot of fun with the old Hero Hunt mechanic, where it was the last hit would make you the new hero. But really, I definitely do understand the need for this change to happen, because it's going to change the whole dynamic of hero hunt quite a bit it's going it's gonna mean there's a you know the game will be less about kind of sneaky cheap kill stealing and more about you know piling on as much carnage as you can on that hero every time you are not him so it'll make for it'll make for much more intense and uh interesting gameplay and and not so much sneaky sneaky in hero hunt so Definitely looking out forward to trying out the new hero hunt after, now that it's been redesigned. Alright, Blast. Uh, Re-added sulfur fields back into the Blast map rotation. Drop zone. Uh, altered player count from 16 to 12. That was dumb. That just makes... That just makes... I mean, I was, I never, I was never a big drop zone fan, so I don't care too much. But that just makes drop, that just makes drop zone lap that much less unique. And yeah, it's it was it was changed for this whole dumbing down process of the game selection mode main menu thing that kind of pisses me off. So not not a fan of that change, even though I didn't really care about drop zone too too much. All right, we're we've only got a three more sections to go, so let's keep it going uh, with mission changes. Uh, survival stars earned. In the survival and ice caves and rebel depot mission, now count towards your total in the social hub. 
Uh, survival. Zoom now functions properly on all maps. Survival. The ATST during wave 4 on Hoth will now properly spawn in. Uh, split screen. Player 2 can now see the health of player 1's deployed turret. Uh, split screen. Player 2 scan pulse. No highlights. Enemies as expected. Hero battles. Friendly AI tokens will now properly award to the enemy team during solo play battles. Losing life in offline battles is now correctly tracked when winning. So yeah, I was never a big survival fanatic, so I didn't... Anyway, I got decided to get through those pretty quickly. Let's move on to some stuff we care about. Hero changes. These are more substantial than I ex expected. Um... Uh, fixed inconsistencies when blocking blaster fire between active and passive blocking for Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, and Emperor Palpatine. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna level with you guys. I have no idea what that means. So if anyone can tell me what the heck that change means, that would be awesome. Anyway, um, anyway, as you guys can see here in the footage, I'm literally just doing a little tour for you guys. I'm, I feel like we're probably gonna win this game of blast so I literally just took a second to look around the level for you guys I hope you appreciate it <laughs> uh, anyway back to the hero changes uh, general when block uh, when blocking blaster fire from explosive shot or ion shot Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader will now deflect and reflect explosive shots and ion shots back okay well I didn't um, that I don't know if that was just a graphical change, because I always felt like explosive shot, people who got their shots deflected always got pounced. but regardless of whether it's just a graphical change or a stat change, it, it is welcome. Alright, more hero changes. General, heroes can no longer fire their weapons when meleeing. Okay, I didn't know that was a thing, but I guess it's another bug fix. Holy crap, a whole bunch of Darth Vader buffs. Darth Vader... Increased health from... Oh, and there we go. We won, We just won Blast. Uh, I moved on pretty quickly to our last and final game to complete our tour of Outer Rim maps. We're on Jabba's Palace now. Anyway, let me continue reading off these hero changes. Um, oh my gosh, Darth Vader. Yeah, health buff from 1500 to 1650. Uh, block ability time increased from 4 seconds to 8 seconds. I definitely felt that, and that's a welcome buff, because I just I always felt like 4 seconds was too short, although I don't know, I don't think Luke got the same buff. He got nerfed, actually, but whatever. Let's move on. Uh, Darth Vader decreased cool town, cooldown of lightsaber throw from 7 seconds to 6 seconds. And you can see me getting that nice little achievement there. Uh, Darth Vader... Increased the distance of the lightsaber throw by three meters. So yet another buff to lightsaber throw. Um, Luke Skywalker decreased health from 1,000 to 925. Uh, Luke Skywalker decreased, slightly decreased running speed. Um... Boba Fett, increased range at which his blaster's damage starts to drop off from 30 to 45 meters. It's another buff. Well, his he's got two buffs. Uh, increased the range at which blaster damage is at the low end from 60 to 75 meters. So he's going to be hitting uh, a little harder at range. Which, uh, I, I mean, we all know Boba Fett's the kind of villain where he's like overpowered in Walker Salt, but kind of underpowered in Heroes vs. Villains. So... Yeah, I, I, it's an interesting change. Um, we're getting close to the end here. Uh, miscellaneous bug fixes, general lighting textures, audio uner, user interface text, and collision fixes. General crash fixes, general party and partner and party connection fixes. Map removed erroneous stormtroopers outside of playable areas from Heroes vs. Villains on Twilight on Hoth. Uh, achievement. Updated text of Akbar's Elite to state, complete any survival mission 
on master without spending a life. Alright, so I'm done. I've finally read off, uh, and you can see the, uh, the screenshot effect there, of the uh, flashbang grenade. Wow. But, uh, yeah, guys, so I'm done reading those patch notes to you guys. Uh, I have tried to read them as sexily to you as possible, although it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty hard to make reading patch notes sexy. But still, worth doing, worth knowing all that stuff, for the reasons I stated before. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, we'll continue to look at this extraction gameplay footage until we reach the end and I'll just keep offering light commentary um, as I'm sure you guys have guessed I edited these weren't four back-to-back -back games I did edit these four games together um, I'm kind of weirdly entertained by this slow progress that the objective is making towards its next goal but yeah here we are in extraction the new game mode um, as I think I said before, I think it, it favors the the Rebels pretty heavily, like like so many other game modes before it. This uh this game mode does favor the Rebels. I don't know, there still seem to be a lot of Rebel lovers at DICE. Here I am activating the shipment to keep it moving. Uh, something that very often can cost you your life. There was Greedo. And didn't didn't stay moving for very long because I guess Greedo came in there. There's that mud bath section, or not? That's not the mud bath. Anyway, that's just a hookah. This is a giant hookah. But uh, yeah, it might be a little hard for you guys to tell the uh, garage and the regular Jabba's palace apart. But that I think that hookah thingy is definitely one of the defining defining features that separates them as well as the giant rancor that's at the bottom of Jabba's palace. Um, but yeah, I've gone through all the changes. I've let you guys know which ones I liked, which ones I didn't. Unfortunately, uh, I could not bring you guys any footage of the... Uh, the new blasters, because I just haven't jumped through enough hoops with the new HUD contracts in order to unlock those. And yeah, I have mixed feelings with the HUD contracts. I mean... Um... Yeah, I, it's like I said, I do feel like that... The whole thing... Okay, here's me getting flashbanged, falling down, and looking around at a famed Star Wars scene. Here's the dead Rancor. I think that's pretty cool. I decided I had to take a quick second look at that. Before moving on with the action, um, which makes it kind of weird in terms of story, because I guess this is after Luke killed the Rancor, but I guess, I guess, uh, but that you see Jabba the Hutt alive in your Hut contracts, unless that's either. Oh, here we go. Here's the only kill I'm gonna get with this power up, and. As you can see, I'm using scout trait, which is why I can be very sneaky sneaky and grab a couple kills before they realized I was there. Or was I using scout trait? That actually is bodyguard. No, never mind. Those guys are just bad. Um, but yeah, guys, I let you guys know which changes I liked, which changes I didn't. This is trying to like just offer an honest review of everything and by the way this video is not meant to help influence your decision as to whether you buy the uh, you know the DLC or the season pass or anything like that I, I I really do not you know I won't say I don't care but really I think it's up to you guys whether you decide that uh, you know, the DLC and Season Pass stuff is worth it. As I'm sure you guys can tell, this DLC is all smaller maps. So, it's really only going to be worth it for you if you 
like smaller these smaller maps. And if so, if all you play is Walker Assault, uh, this DLC probably doesn't have very much to offer you. Uh, and by extension, maybe the season pass doesn't have that much to offer you. Um, oh, so there, I guess I'm confirming that the Oxys, the Oxys grenade will hurt people with shields. Uh, although it doesn't do that much damage, so it doesn't feel the Dioxys, the new Dioxys grenade does not feel that threatening. Um, but uh, what else is there to say? But yeah, I'm. Um, but yeah, being a YouTuber, buying, you know, getting this season pass, despite how expensive it was, was a no-brainer. Because, you know, I was gonna let me bring new content to you guys. And it's all, all for my subbies. Yes, it's all for you. But uh, you guys have to decide for yourself if you find this new content worth it. But like I said, there was a lot of stuff added, even if you didn't want to buy DLC. And I've tried to let you guys know which was which. And there I am wasting that power up. But yeah, the new the new extraction game mode. Um, it's entertaining enough that I'm glad I got access to it. Even if it is yet another uh, almost automatic win for the rebels. It's not guaranteed. It's not a guaranteed win for the rebels. But like it's another one of those deals that we're all used to where, you know, the Imperials can win, but they have to be a pretty, you have to be a pretty good Imperial team to win this game mode. And, uh, yeah, this is the last gameplay footage I'm bringing you is actually one of the first games I played. Like, you can see I'm getting this, uh, blaster that I'm using. Uh, I was get running around grabbing kills with it in order to unlock the scatter gun, which I showed you in those first three videos. And you saw me just not too long ago, you saw me adre um, unlocking adrenaline stim. And uh, what else is there to talk about? Yeah, um... So yeah, like I said at the start, there's three new s star cards and four new blasters. Um, as you guys saw in those first three games that which I showed you, that scatter gun is pretty beastly. And uh, it does do kind of the same thing as the cycler rifle in which you can have a close range uh, insta-kill. But it's, it's well worth using. And I'm not as excited for the other star cards. Um, uh, just the Dioxys Grenade and the Adrenaline Rush thing seem a little weak sauce, but if you guys, like, leave me all your feedback, guys, if you want to see some gameplay with those things, I'll be sure to get those to you. So yeah, I'm just really showing you the new HUD contracts. You've probably seen this for yourself already if you've logged into Battlefront, but if you've got tons of credits sitting around like I do, make sure you get in there, unlock all of these hot contracts so you can start making progress towards unlocking all of this stuff. Don't let that bit of fail and you will never be safe in the outer rim text intimidate you. Just just start unlocking all this stuff here because uh, depending on how you play it might take a while. No reason to hold off making progress on more unlocks. So anyway guys, thanks for watching. Remember I welcome all your input. And until next time, I shall see you starside.